All right, so before we jump into MongoDB, let's first talk a little bit about what a NoSQL database actually is. So NoSQL actually stands for not only SQL. Many people think it actually means no SQL as if it weren't possible to use structured query language with these databases, and that's not true. Uh, it's possible in many cases if that's what you want to do. A better way or a better meaning for NoSQL is non-relational. All right, SQL is just a syntax to interact with a database, but NoSQL is fundamentally different than a relational model. All right, NoSQL databases don't use tables or columns. They have dynamic schemas that um, are sometimes even called schemaless. Uh, so we don't predefine tables and field types and all that like you would with a relational database. So NoSQL is a growing industry because it serves and handles big data much better than relational databases do. All right, with the popularity of social networks, there's just so much data out there, and NoSQL is a good system to handle those massive amounts. All right, and with that said, there's many advantages over uh, traditional relational database systems. All right, so let's take a look at some of those advantages. So first we have scaling. So uh, relational databases can be a nightmare to scale. Uh, it's, it's oftentimes difficult, it's expensive, and they use a scale up method, which means that they, they need to add proprietary expensive resources to a single form factor. So upping the CPU, adding more RAM, and so on, until you get to that point where you just can't add anymore. NoSQL, however, uses a scale out method, meaning that if we run out of disk space, then we can simply expand by adding more clients and not expensive, powerful systems, but commodity hardware. All right, so it's much easier and it's much cheaper to scale. NoSQL can also handle very large volumes of unstructured and structured data. It's cheaper and easier to manage and not just on a, on a scaling basis, but all around. Okay, it's also uh, extremely flexible and schemaless. Now, when I say schemaless, I mean at the database level. So if we were to look at MySQL, for example, and say we wanted a table for blog posts, all right, we can't even think about the code just yet. We'd have to create the table um, either through the command line or something like PHP MyAdmin. Uh, we'd have to create all the columns. We'd have to create the, field, the fields along with the types, whether it's a string or an integer. There's none of this with NoSQL. We can simply create our schema on the fly through our application. All right, and most NoSQL databases are also capable of simple replication, and this is really important in the event of a power outage as well as planned or unplanned maintenance. Um, there's generally no requirements or separate applications needed for replication like you would need with a relational system. All right, now there's different types of NoSQL databases, so let's go over those main types. So first of all, we have a, a document database, which is what MongoDB is. This is actually the most popular type and seems to be the most powerful. Data is stored in a document, which is essentially in the format of a JSON object. If you know JSON syntax, then picking up MongoDB and other document databases, is it's going to be really easy for you. All right, and we'll talk more about documents in the next video. We also have key value stores, which are the simplest type of NoSQL databases. They use key value pairs in a hash table. So a unique key is uh, basically a pointer to the value. There's also column oriented databases or column stores where data is stored in cells that are grouped in columns, uh, columns of data. Um, rather than in rows, okay? And columns are grouped into what's called a family. So these are generally for storing and processing huge amounts of data. There's also graph databases, which are really cool. Uh, we have a course on Neo4j, which is the most popular graph database. Graph databases use nodes with key value pairs, and then they can map and build relationships with other nodes through what's called an edge. Uh, so these are great for data that has a lot of relationships, things like social networks, all right, where you have users that are friends with other users that share messages and photos, things like that. All right, and then we finally have caching systems such as Redis and Memcached, and these are where the data is actually stored in memory as opposed to on disk. Although with Redis, you can you do have the option to push the data to disk. 
All right, so that's it guys. In the next video, we're going to talk more about MongoDB and document databases.